welcome Laura to Metalarium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about, about, about you, about your career, about this new album that is will come in, in the next year. And what is related well to the music industry? So I started when uh when I come across how have you been doing these crazy times? Because we started a pandemic two years ago, now a war in Europe. So who knows yeah. what happened next couple of years? Alien invasion, zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the music uh, industry and the music uh, scene was really challenged, I think. Um, at the beginning, uh, when the pandemic started, I thought, okay, maybe in a, in a way it's good because I'm going to have more time at home to practice the guitar and uh, maybe write some songs. But after a few weeks, I can feel that I was just going in circles at home and I had to uh, withdraw a bit and, uh, and try to uh, get out and do something else because I was just cr going crazy at home and we had no shows. Uh, so I decided to go uh, to Portugal and uh, closer to nature, surf a bit. And uh, I wrote uh, most of my third album there. Great, great. Well, this new album is your third one since you started your career in 2000, well, since you started your career in 2008. When you are yeah. you are playing guitar, play through and on YouTube or this kind of stuff. So how do you feel to to be in your third record? How was the reception for the first two now? And how the how do the people wait for you? Because all the time the reviewers, the interviewers ask me, waiting more, 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 etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard to uh, to keep uh, people on on waiting, you know, because of course they're, they're excited about new uh, material. And yeah, you're right. I think I started around 2008, but this was my YouTube channel. And then it took me years before the, the band was created. Uh, so I think uh, with the band, we've been touring a lot since um, the release of the first album in 2017. And, uh, and now it's the third album. I feel more and more confident about the recording, about uh, being on stage. And I really can't wait to share this uh, new material with a uh, with people, but next time, I know it's been a long time, but for the next album, the fourth one, I, I think I'm gonna start writing soon because I'm I'm, still, I'm, uh, I'm already excited for the next one, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. As you are, I think well, as you are an, 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 like, a, like a new, like a new, new artist on the world because I love what's now there. So you have three albums with this new one. So do you have pressure from, this, from the label, but ear music, for example, says perhaps you need to present new music in two years and one year no i'm really lucky i'm really lucky because they're kind of letting me uh, do whatever i want at my own pace uh, i can release the music that i want for now it was never a problem and um and i yeah when i'm dealing with the label i when i'm ready i tell them okay i have the songs when can we record and then they set up everything and then Sometimes it's a bit postponed because they have to leave some time for the promotion and everything and recording the video clips. But uh, I'm really lucky that I, I'm free for this um, recording process, writing process and the time lapse that I have in between the albums. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, we are talking about now about the, a little history about this one. Who, who was the person that or encouraged you to be an artist? Because you are started as a, as a YouTube guitar player but it's a difference also it's a difference because a lot of now exists a lot of a lot of guitar players drum players bass players etc mm. etc is already exist but who encourage you to, to to say hey laura you need to create your own music to art like artists before uh, a difference be, a, be a lot of things so, yeah but it took me some time because when i first uh, started playing guitar i was really introverted and I felt more confident staying at home and recording um, covers, you know, for YouTube. And I did this for years. And then, uh, I don't know, after I, it took me a long time, but eight years after I started playing guitar, I finally uh, thought about maybe I should uh, start a band. And then I just met the right uh, people, you know, the right person, Mathieu, uh, who was the other guitarist uh, in the band. He was kind of uh, pushing me to create this because I, I think he was really interested in playing with me uh, too. And then we just met the right people. And once you're, you feel good on, on stage uh, with your team, then it's easy to, uh, to just uh, move with this, uh, with this, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, okay, okay. With a lot of artists now, well, it's, it's very difficult to get attention from the people because as, as you can see now in, on Spotify, on Tidal, on YouTube, it's already exists one well, 30 p 30 eps 
hundred albums, re editions, remasters, a lot yeah. of them. So, well, you are the one of the luckiest ones that you are start with a YouTube player. Then and then there are, you have three albums now. So, how do you feel these achievements in you in your work in in general? Because now a YouTube channel for especially for me when I see some guitar player or drum player, nah. One more. So why are you yeah. so there's being over the rest? Now it's. Uh, I think I agree with you. It's really hard to be interested by someone because there are so many people, new people arriving all the time, and the 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 scene, the rock scene, the blues rock scene, and is so crowded that it's it's hard to um, get the attention uh, of people to to catch attention. So I think I was really lucky in a way that I started early on YouTube. And that's why people kept following me because I was one of the first, uh, first people, first women and first uh, people covering uh, classic rock on YouTube on electric guitar. And uh, at, a, at a time where there weren't too many people doing this, because of course, I think if I was doing this right now, if I was trying to start right now, it would be much more difficult. So in a way I, I, I was uh, kind of uh, early in this uh, thing and that's, that really helped me, I think, because uh, right now it would be so much harder. So I'm glad I already have my way, you know, uh, kind of a strong core, a strong fan base. And um, and now I just have to try to keep these people following me by releasing interesting material. And uh, I think that maybe the hard part is already done. So I was I was lucky in a way. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, you are now into the rock style in general. So, but if we if, if you can see now, we are returning to the 40s and 50s. No, when are people listen to music with just sing just one single, two singles, I think three singles at least. So, but now yeah, this is a need. Well, this is a retro movement because now the generation of talking about 20 or 15. 20 or 25 people or maximum 30 years so they love to hear the music with one two singles so for you if we try to relate this aspect with a new album so which songs for you is the best one to capture whole essence from this album uh it's really hard because for me there are kind of uh, different atmospheres in this album but of course um i'm still uh, i think um, i'm still really uh, attached to the rock uh, the rock music so i would um it depends because there really there are um, several vibes. I think my uh, favorite. So if you divide the albums the album in two parts, I think my favorite rock song would be "Swing It Out," and my uh, favorite song for the rest of the album would be "Before We Get Burned." That kind of has a more bluegrass vibe, so it's really different. So I would pick uh, these two, but in the end. Um, I'm not the only one deciding about the singles because I don't even think these uh, songs are, gonna, are going to be uh, the singles. I leave this to the record company because they know what uh, to push and uh, with a better strategy than mine because I don't really have a strategy. I'm just writing the music and then they, they see what they can do with this. Okay, okay. So who came, with, who came with the idea to put the name of the band like your name, Laura Cox? Because it's much better to play it because uh i don't know a female rock band perhaps for example and why do you say to put laura cox no we um we chose to keep my name because when we started the band the project i already had a few million views on my youtube channel so we thought okay at least if we are keeping my name when we're not starting from zero we're not starting from the beginning we already have a community and some people that already know my name. So we decided to keep my name. Ah, okay, okay. So um, one aspect that is, is a huge accomplishment for you, one well, huge achievement for you, is that you are now one of the biggest labels around the metal and rock nowadays with ear music it is. So how mm -hmm. do you see this achievement? Because with a new band, especially for a, 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 especially for a musician came from the YouTube area, it's very difficult now to get attention from a label like like this, your music, Warner Bros. Yeah. Music is very difficult. I'm really uh, grateful for this because, um, so I first signed from uh, my first album, I signed with the French label Vericords and they're working with your music. So my, my first album was only released in France with Vericords. And then um, from the second album, Burning Bright, to the one that's going to be released, Vericords, worked uh, with uh, ear music 
that's kind of the international branch of uh, my French record label. And they're often working together, maybe not for young artists and not French artists, but Ear Music listened to the, the music and said, okay, we think this has potential. And they were happy to join the, the adventure. So I'm really, really grateful for this because they're opening the, um, they're opening uh, the, the path, you know, to something wider, more, um, we can we can tour uh, more abroad. We yeah, yeah. I, I'm really happy that I have uh, ear music following the project. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, no, this new album, the head about water, is one a, a three years of difference with the last album, with Burning Bright. So for you, I don't know perhaps this new album was composed and written during the the pandemic, or perhaps yeah. do you think uh, well, well, or was it before? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, this uh, I mostly. Um, wrote this album yeah during the pandemic between uh, end of 2020 and um, mid middle of uh, 2021 so when i was kind of away go, coming uh, going from portugal to my place around paris in france and um and then yeah I, I i had a lot of ideas new riffs when i was away and then i came back in paris and we met uh, with the band the whole band in rehearsal studio and we arranged everything so yes, it was composed on a short amount of time because compared to uh, the previous albums, I had songs that I composed uh, years ago and it took a long time to put together. This one was composed in a shorter amount of time. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. So now with this aspect, I saw that you use all the time the, 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 the equipment like Gibson, Let's Fall, Bacchus Guitars, Oranges. Perhaps do you have more received more offers that you are now uh, uh, one of the biggest artists here, no? There. Um, no, I'm mostly, now I'm really mostly use uh, Gibson guitars. Uh, uh, as far as guitar go, I, I love them. I, uh, I mostly play uh, Les Paul. So I have my main uh, Les Paul classic and I also have a junior, which is more simple. And I like this too, just one pickup. And I started playing um, not so long ago, the lap steel. That's something you could hear me play on some of the new songs. And I also, I'm also introducing the lap steel on stage. Um, so um, yeah, I'm really, so this is the instrument you can see on the, on the background. And um, so this is a, a Duesenberg uh, lap steel. I, I love it and it's really uh, different from the guitar, but that's something I really want to work more on. Okay, okay, well, well talking about other aspects, as I said in the first question, and um, now, as you can see now, we, I, I think three months, four months, uh, I think uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, the create, we, the, some people create the artwork from models well, and uh, uh, artificial intelligence to create art now with uh, just put a, a little descriptions with works and this software create and a piece of art. So mm -hmm. in this aspect, and this aspect is relating to the now, there are a lot of musicians now that are using the artificial intelligence to create music with drum machines, with bass players, yeah. etc. Et yeah. So for you, how do you see now the artificial intelligence will most uh, will most common thing into the creating as an art for the artists? And perhaps do you see in the next future, well, in the coming 10, perhaps 10 or 20 years, who knows? Perhaps the machine will take the these aspects. So the machines mm -hmm. just create it all. I hope not, <laughs> because this would be bad for the rock industry, I think. I think this can work in other, yeah, electro music or other scenes. And this is a different kind of art for me. This is still music, but played differently. So I really think, I hope that we are not going to lose the, like, uh, human musicians the next years. I don't think so, because uh, to play rock, to play blues, to play jazz, you, you need people. You cannot just do this on a computer. I think you need the feeling. Um, so I don't think we're going to lose this. Maybe it's not really popular at the moment. Maybe the electro uh, electro scene is um, more present, but this is another kind of art. And I think both um, worlds can uh, live together. I don't think that's a problem. And right now we have a lot of new rock bands coming, like a 70s revival that's working. So uh, I think we're rock and roll is not dead and uh, still need uh, human beings to perform. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Well, perhaps next couple, next years, or perhaps in the next years, we will see for the first album from Machine. Yeah, I, I would be curious to hear. Really, I would be curious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So now, as I said, well, the music industry changed a lot through decades, so especially for classic bands from the say seventies and eighties. 
and they have a seen a huge change around the world, like especially in the music industry. But even for artists like you, the music industry changes very fast now. There's, next year we'll have another platform. Next year we have a lot of yeah. to music to great music. Who knows? And this is changes in the, the music industry since 2005 to now are very fast now. It's, it's the old now I think when we when 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 we were thinking of this aspect in 2000 2010 perhaps 10 years long 10 years ago because a lot of things changed in the music yeah, industry. Sure. So the, mm -hmm. in this aspect so how has been your experience with digital platforms and it's how hard do to you follow. Deal, uh, how, and how do you deal with the issue of the fans not listening to the albums like before because mm -hmm. they focus more than just in singles. Yeah, so for me, I think uh, the different media and new platforms are a bit hard to follow. But uh, in a way, I'm I'm really happy that YouTube is still something that even the young generation is is watching because I started on YouTube and now I I was a bit scared that maybe YouTube is going to disappear and be replaced by something else. But even now, the young people are spending time on YouTube, maybe not watching. While I was watching the traditional guitar covers, maybe um, uh, more fun content, but uh, at least the platforms I was using when I started I still are still here. Facebook is still working and Instagram too. I still have to uh, start a TikTok. <laughs> That's going to be a challenge for me. Um, but uh, And I have to say for the kind of music that I'm making, um, the people that are following me are um, are not, it depends, but uh, I think I have a really um, loyal fan base and it's uh, the kind of um, audience that likes old rock and roll are still buying uh, whole albums, you know, not just streaming on Spotify or they, they, they are still buying uh, vinyls. So I think um, for rock, old rock music, um, the physical uh, object is not, uh, is not dead. Uh, I, I still have a... Um, a fan base who's uh, who's buying uh, music, so this is a good thing for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, as, as I all, I, I always consider that the rock, well, especially the rock and then the metal music, is the music the people that may age because, as you can see now, yeah. are the classics from the. No, if you can hear pop music, it's not classic for us just for the mm -hmm. moment. But the rock and metal, yeah, yeah, has, uh, rock and metal are classic albums until today. May age. But keep this by big by keep the spirit yeah. young. So I listen they're going to the through last, the generations. Yes, yeah, yes. I listen to the last records from the classic band, and after decades, many of them managed to keep the energy until now. So, but to be realistic of this aspect, so nothing lasts forever. So, in your opinion, what do you think is going to happen when most classic bands that can that can perform at the stadiums will be retired? Do you think there are younger bands that carry the torch in this aspect? Uh, I, for now, I'm, I don't think so. It's hard to, I don't think, or the way it's heading right now, I don't see new bands, new rock bands filling stadiums. Maybe this time is over, but I don't think rock and roll is dead. I think they, they can fill bigger, big venues, but the time where you had a rock stars making everybody go crazy and, and playing in stadiums, when the big, big legends are dead, I'm not sure it's going to happen again, but at least if we have a more accessible bands and the rock music is still living, maybe we don't need this uh, craziness of uh, stadiums and uh, as long as the music keeps on uh, being uh, broadcast and, uh, and living. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we are very close to this interview, Laura. And for that, what are the future plans that the band has for this new album? Perhaps a um, European tour, um, North yeah. American tour, more videos upcoming, or who knows, a uh, Latin American tour in the next couple of years, who knows? Yeah, I would love to. For, for now, the priority is promote this album and, and we're going to tour. So after the pandemic, the priority is touring within Europe. Um, and then uh, I really hope next year we can uh, play for the first time in the US. Uh, we're going to see what we can do. But since this album will be released world, worldwide, I think this could be a possibility to uh, to go for the first time to the to the US and see how it is there. But yeah, the priority right now is uh, focusing on working on the new sets, uh, including the new songs on our shows and promoting this album as much as possible, creating content, video clips, and, uh, and see where it's taking us. 
Great, great to know, Laura. So, well, Laura, the set times arrived at this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one like me doing this one. It's a great pleasure to meet you oh, face to face, not, not, <laughs> not in person, but uh, congratulations for this new album. It's a great one. Yeah, perhaps thanks a lot. Want, perhaps you want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalenum followers. Yeah, I really, really hope we can play, uh, we can come play for you. Maybe next year I'm crossing my fingers because I know you're a big, big rock fans like we don't have in France. So wait for us. I hope we're coming, but thank you. Thanks again for having me.